can be used to preserve the integrity of spoken versions of the language. Many of the same techniques used in recording oral history can be used to preserve spoken language. Uh, now, language survival. When we talk language survival and invention, now there are factors that are responsible for that. Now, relocation to where the language is not spoken, it will be endangered. If people are relocated to the area where their native language is not spoken, at the same time, that language is going to be endangered. Now, if there is a political and military Now, this is that of Africa. Um, when you look at it, uh, the language is actually critically endangered. Badi is vulnerable. Bapika is vulnerable. The Falka critically endangered. The Guza definitely endangered. Dundu and so on. And uh, I try to bring that. Now, what can the world, what can film play in the survival of language? As I said earlier, film is a moving motion of images, therefore, a visual act. Now, film has a wider coverage and access because of its visual nature. Hence, using film to preserve the existence of a local language is very relevant. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many things that are going on. Now, there are many uh, according to Professor Abdullah Oba, I'm in one of the papers he presented uh, on how star uh, video films is today, today and tomorrow, uh, intellectualizing how star films, uh, video films in Nigeria. He tried to bring and he attempted to see that the video film is an act, an act intellectual process discussed by researchers, public intellectuals and academicians and often comes as a surprise to the practitioners when that film uh, was organized. Who and by life see the organization or profession uh, as a simple marketing process uh, and subjected to a creating market process. It is the same very market process that makes the filmmaker sacrifice art performance a profession and occupation to mass acumen. Uh, the same very market that guarantees financial returns. Now, uh, according to uh, Director General of the Black African Arts and Civilization, Tunde Babawali, the first independent films and adaptation of Ulo Shinka's Congress Harvest was made in 1970. Indigenous feature films in Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Hausa follows. The transition from cellular to home is very smooth. Uh, language confers on films on enduring visual character. For it is the language uh, that drives uh, uh, that drives that drives uh, sorry the impact the impact of indigenous language films to include preservation of language propagation of culture encouragement of language learning they also help in the role interpretation and enhancement in film artistic values now uh, increase the, what what do we do we if we want the indigenous language to, to, to get to improve then uh, first we have to in, improve the, 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 the production equipment the cameras, the lights the storytelling and so many other uh, institutions then the same well we have to look for marketing, marketing in social media uh, YouTube Vimeo Amazon Netflix African films whatever a 
good storytelling reflecting our culture and traditions and then the film festival as we are witnessing today uh celebrating indigenous writers now there's also the need to encourage and celebrate indigenous writers and proposed a translation policy that will make indigenous language from accessible to non-speakers so when we produce the local language we have to get subtitlers or translators that will be able to uh, translate the local language into international languages or other languages so that watch and then appreciate then positive attempts at, and strategies to ensure survival should be encouraged and supported uh, as we all know the ultimate survival of any culture depends largely on the survival of language through which it is transmitted from generation to generation as well as other culture for assimilation now ibitola added in one of the paper he presented that regrettably colonialism has not only intruded into african indigenous culture languages but has also eroded it to the point of extinction to guard against this avoidable disaster there is the need for a drastic change of attitudes to the study and use of our indigenous language in africa and nigeria being the undisputable big brother of the black race must take a lead in this direction now thank you very much for the, the, the for listening I appreciate
One of the uh, main sources of entertainment within the teaming use. You are not audible, Emma. We can't hear you, please. So can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very well. Am I loved you now? Am I loved you now? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Sorry. Can you hear me very well? Yes. Okay. I said prior to the existence of commercially driven, locally made indigenous house language films of carnival industry, Indian films were uh, considered as considered and cherished as one of the main sources of entertainment within the teaming use in northern Nigeria. Therefore, with the introduction of commercially oriented Hausa films to Rumindanya in the year 1990 and their subsequent productions, the filmmakers' orientations and their experiences of watching Indian films made them to produce Hausa films that normally look like Indian films, courtesy of their experiences and what they used to watch as Indian films. So one of the, one therefore is at liberty to claim that the productions and consumptions of Carnywood films, films seems to be similar to what was used to know uh, in Indian films right from the 1970s and 1980s. It will interest you to note that during these years, uh, audience including the current house of filmmakers were used to watch Indian films, therefore their experiences and their film tests Always, uh, always tilted towards the films. So, so as such, such, the same storylines story and, and narratives are presented, are presented and, consumed and consumed by the, by the audience. audience. So the advancement of Indian House of Films has really posed serious challenges, economic challenges, on the Carnywood industry as their viewership dropped and tilted towards the Indian House of Films. Why? Because the Indian films have better production treatment, the language problems are solved, Thus, audience go for uh, the alternatives. Go to go to the former because uh, of their similar narrations and patterns that are normally presented. I told you from the beginning that uh, house of films mostly drive their experiences and their expertise from watching from their long watching of Hindi films or Indian films generally. So this paper, therefore, is the impact of house language dubbed Indian films on Carnywood film industry. The study is designed to achieve the following specific objectives. Number one, to discover the extent of influence of house language dubbed Indian films on Carnewood film industry. Objective number two goes this way. Uh, we are trying to find out the economic implication of house language dubbed Indian films on Carnewood film industry. And lastly, the objective of this paper, of this presentation, is to find out the cultural implications of house language Indian films on Carnywood film industry. Therefore, based on these objectives and the aim of the study, uh, the, the, I have these directions um, as my literature review. The one we see, we have language dubbing, the art of post-production in filmmaking, language and cultural hegemony, the case of filmmaking, cultural influence in relation to the prosperity of the film industry, economic implication of film productions, as well as film as a global medium, how would the film performed outside the production context of Hausa? 
Therefore, I decide to achieve the objective of this paper using these methodologies or these methods. The first one is survey, then focus group discussion and in-depth interview. On that survey, filmmakers and audiences of Carnewood films, maybe 2,000 samples were picked out of the audiences and filmmakers. And as far as FGD is concerned, uh, two sessions are going to be conducted. The one with the stakeholders of Hausa Film Industry or Carnewood Film Industry. Number two, with active audience uh, eight each in each group. What I mean by active audience is uh, the audience that watch uh, Hindi films and Hausa films, and they are actively or they can actively participate in any uh, structured discussion on these two films industries. Uh, hypothetical testing. This is what I mean by when I say this, I mean uh, there was a pilot study conducted that will give me direction of when coming to the uh, full work or field work of this nature. Uh, maybe I get direction or inspiration from these uh, pilot studies. Now, one, 20 persons were selected and served with the questionnaires out of 200. Number two, in-depth interviews were conducted with two persons. And number three, four persons, two audiences, and two filmmakers were used uh, for focus group discussions. And these are the preliminary results. The first one is, uh, in trying to uh, achieve the objective that says that uh, the study investigate the extent of influence of house language dubbed Indian films on kind of industry, uh, the preliminary result I got out of this study is house of films are gradually perceived as fake or remnant of Indian films. Number two, local television stations started picking and airing those Indian house of films to the detriment of Carnewood films. Number three, audience of Carnewood films reduced tremendously thereby affecting utmost productivity in the industry. Uh, as far as the second objective is concerned, mean the economic implication of house language dubbed Indian films on Carnewood film industry. Number one, Carnewood market is saturated with the Indian house of films, thereby pushing the local productions out of the market. Number two, lack of sale and profit generation on house of fame lead to the uh, inability to many producers to have enough resources for their productions. Three, Carnewood filmmakers cannot compare the profit, uh, profitability of their productions with Indian house film as the former requires rigorous production and expenses from productions, censorship, to marketing and distributions. You know, those films, uh, what you need to do, just pick them and a kind of record or dubbed on them. But this one, they have to be, when you produce your film, you have to go to do national censorship, you pay, you come to state censorship and a lot of processes that are involved. Then, as far as the third objective is concerned, which was aimed at finding out the cultural implication of host language Indian films on Carnewood film industry, Carnewood filmmakers are forced to consider foreign format of production for them to remain in the market. You can now see that singing and dancing videos are always fail in YouTube uploads. This is the only way they can survive. Number two, uh, emergency of new house vocabulary, sorry, emergence of new house vocabularies that are used in the context of film practice. For example, words like Ms. Burbuda and other things are now picked and are used in our conventional uh, kind of films making. Mm. Now then preliminary recommendations. This study recommends that Carnewood filmmakers should prioritize creativity and improve treatment on their films for better commercial viability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashuru Tukuru, for the presentation. Now we call on Dr. Hajara Umar Sanda for presentation. Dr. Hajara Umar Sanda, are you ready? Dr. Hajara Umar, if you are ready, let us know, please. Dr. Hajara, yes, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, well, okay, Dr. Hajara, go ahead. Go ahead, please. We can hear you. Uh, my topic is on foreign films and indigenous value systems of, um, of northern Nigeria Hausa communities, exploring the sociocultural implication of translated Bollywood movies. And this is a joint paper with one of my um, MSc students, um, Simon. 
So the background of the study is um, stating that the proliferation of translated Bollywood films into Hausa language within the Northern Nigerian Hausa communities has raised concerns over the values that are usually represented in those imported and translated films. And according to Larkin, 1997, one of the scholars that have made intensively interrogated the infiltration of Indian films into Hausa Northern Nigerian communities observed that, and I quote, To this day, stickers of um, decorate. Sorry, I'm... hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, I just have a phone call, so I have to mute it. Um, and I'm sorry I cannot share my screen with you because of the time uh, factor. So I said, um, according to Lacking. He said, and I quote, to this day, stickers of Indian films and stars decorate the taxis and buses of the North. Posters of Indian films adorn the walls of tailors, shops and mechanics, garages, etc. For over 30 years, Indian films, their stars, Sorry, please. <laughs> my, um, my laptop, I have problem with my laptop, so I'm trying to do. So I said for over 30 years, Indian films, their stars and fashion, music and stories have been a dominant. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we are. I'm not drinking. We are all waiting for you to continue. Yes. That's, sorry, that's please, I'm baby. Sorry, please. Um, my laptop has problem. Please. Uh -uh. So maybe I'll 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 set it up and come back to you, please. I'm very sorry. Okay. Over to. I have problem with my laptop. Mm. What about you, Dr. Kurifi? Dr. Kurifi? Since he is... Dr. Kurifi? Oh my God. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Ajara, are you back? No, she said she needs to fix something with her, uh, on her computer. Let's Maybe we should, someone else should present. If anyone is ready, I think. Hello, Ibrahim Nure. Hi, everyone. Brian, go ahead, please. Brian, go ahead, please. All right, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here today. So I'm going to be sharing my screen with everyone now. Right, it means to share my screen.
Hi. Hello, Luren, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay, great. So my presentation is all about, and I don't know if you, if, I, if I've been able to share my screen with everyone now. Yeah, we can see it on the screen. Okay, great. So my presentation is all about, yeah, we can see it's all about the mission 1897. So it okay. is, hello? My presentation is all about, yeah, we can all see about it. the mission 1897. So it is, hello? Yes. Okay, great. So my presentation is titled Displacement, Identity Formation and Colonial Intervention in Invention 1897. So Invention 1897 is, a, is, an, is an historical model that talks about uh, the Benin history, how Benin, were, how Benin people were actually invaded from their own um, from their own society, and how the colonial master actually came to actually battle them and actually stole their artifacts. So here is just a pre-colonial activities in Benin in, um, in Benin before the before the invasion actually happened. So there are a lot of African traditions actually occurred in those moments. We have a lot of play. We have uh, we have a lot of um, oral traditions. We have a lot of. Uh, agricultural activities which involves mining and the rest. So this is the artifact there. So these are actually the uh, the pre-colonial history before the invasion in 1897. So now let's go to what we know as the spaceman. When we talk about the spaceman, what are we talking about? So the spaceman is actually one of the core thematic covers in post-colonial studies. And this has to do with the this has to do with the intervention of the colonial uh, of the colonialist in the African culture. It may not necessarily be African alone, but it has to do with every every side that the colonial master have actually conquered. Now, the, the, what what um what post-colonialism is trying to let us realize is that there is no way we can actually talk about this place without talking about the influence of post-colonialism because post-colonial study is because post-colonialism is more into the influence of colonial uh, colonialists on the African cultural heritage. So now the cultural displacement and its effects. Now, what I, what then happened when cultural displacement happened? The whole lot of things would definitely a whole lot of things would definitely surface, and that includes hybridity. That includes cultural uh, disillusionment. That also includes uh, loss of culture and everything, and a whole lot of that. And that actually happened in Benin. Uh, uh, that actually that actually happened to Benin people too. So when the colonial masters actually came, what happened? They destroyed their properties. They destroyed their land, and at the same time, all their cultural heritage, all the artifacts which were actually stolen and put in 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 some central places in in in. in, in in UK and other countries too, and those include museums and the rest. So now the artifacts have, have actually become a selling point to the European, whereby they actually display it and actually earn a whole lot of it from that, neglecting the fact that these these are these artifacts are regarded as a means of communication and at the same time as the heritage and what and I said that the livelihood of the African people. So now, what happened when displacement happened? There will be a whole lot of so what, oh, there will be a whole lot of issues, which include identity formation and crisis. And what is identity formation? A uh, situation by African is actually lost of their heritage and they are lost of their culture. And at the same time, they do not know where they belong to. Are they are they part of the whites or they are still Africans or are they in between? So in Obimbaba's ideology, so Obimbaba is actually a post-colonial critic, and he was of the opinion that Africans do not believe in the they are not European, neither are they Africans. They are actually in between, and he called that. In between oh third space so they are in between the third, they are in between the european and the african values because they have actually been robbed of their identity and at the same time they are struggling to or they are struggling to be like the whites but they are not them and they are, and, they, and also they are actually finding it difficult to actually erase their cultural heritage so now colonial intervention. So these are a whole lot of things happened during colonialism. So and because they are the white, the white are actually more of the more of the opinion to actually get their own so so good Africans um, based on their own selfish interests. So they, they are just of the opinion that okay, they are just looking for the better ways to actually with Africans and looking for better ways to actually steal from a whole lot of things in African in in, in in Africa, and these are some of the things. Oh, these are some of the things directors and film producers try to actually present to the world. So that they have been also uh, the director of this film, Imagine, 
last year long, it has been able to prove to us that there are a whole lot of things we need to document. And one of those things is actually the Bini East too, because they've, they actually suffered a whole lot of colonialism. And at the same time, most of the, and they are actually confused today because, because they've actually been affected by the whites. So, and that's the, actually the end of this paper. Thank you so much. Hello, Mr. Mundi. What about Dr. Hajara? Can we go back to her? Yes, I'm ready now. Okay, Dr. Hajara, please. So, Dr. Uh, Mr. Caleb Mundi should be ready. After Dr. Hajara, we take Mr. Mundi. Dr. Hajara, go ahead, please. So, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the hitch in the first initial presentation I did. As I said, I have problem with my laptop as well as the internet. So I hope my apologies, uh, many apologies. As I earlier said, this is a joint paper between me and my MSc student. And the topic of our topic is on foreign films and indigenous value systems of Northern Nigeria, Hausa communities, exploring the sociocultural implication of translated Bollywood um, films. So the background of the study is as follows. And we said the proliferation of translated Bollywood films into Hausa language within the Northern Nigerian Hausa communities has raised concerns over the values that are usually represented in those imported and translated films. Like in, as I said, 1997, one of the scholars that have intensively interrogated the infiltration of Indian films in Hausa, in Hausa Northern Nigerian communities, observed that, and I quote, to this day, stickers of Indian films and stars decorate the taxis and buses of the North. Posters of Indian films adorn the walls of tailors, shops, and mechanics garages. Every, for, for over 30 years, Indian films their stars and fashions, music and stories have been a dominant part of everyday popular culture in Northern Nigeria. And similarly, Adamu 2010 observed that in Muslim Northern Nigeria, the most common transnational entertainment template is Hindi film and music from the Indian Bollywood film industry. So as cultural products, films reflect the socio-cultural peculiarities of the local environment where they are purchased. The translation of Indian films into Hausa language for indigenous audiences in Nigeria, therefore raises the question of cultural values, which these films, these films project to their new audiences. So the study interrogates the concern from the perspective of cultural film theory. The study underscores the sociocultural values represented in selected translated Bollywood films that are widely circulated within the Hausa communities of Northern Nigeria. So cultural film theory, a look of theoretical perspective. So I'm now looking at the theory. Cultural film theory focuses on how films reflect the culture in which they are made with the goal of understanding how meaning is constructed in a society's social, histor uh, historical, political, economic, and religious context. So and it provides a theoretical perspective that explains how films reflect the aura of their produ uh, production environment in terms of the values and ideals that are projected and promoted therein. Cultural film theory is a variant of the critical theory of the famous Frankfurt School that concentrates on films and how they reflect realities of their normative uh, production, context, and environment. And in this study, the theory is used to interrogate the importation of values via translated Bollywood films that are massively circulated into conservative Hausa communities of Northern Nigeria and the sociocultural implications 
of the practice that of the practice that has spanned decades and is still thriving, facilitated by the uh, proliferation of modern ICTs that enhance massive sharing and viewership of films across devices. So house of sociocultural values at a glance. Modern house of sociocultural values are derived largely from the principles of Islam, as we all know, the predominant religion among the house of people, according to Adele K. 2005. And he, quote, uh, he said, and I quote, although Islam is not indigenous to Hausa land, it has, along with Hausa language, become the most distinguishing feature of Hausa culture. Similarly, accordingly, the hallmark of Hausa sociocultural values revolve around the cardinal pr uh, principles of modesty, of course, decency, honesty and justice, truthfulness and sincerity, fairness, clarity, humility, patience, righteousness, and respect for elders, among a host of other values. And again, um, Salomon 1993 used Kirke as an omnibus term that encapsulates the entirety of house cultural values. According to them, each culture provides a concept, uh, concept around which people can shape and judge their, uh, their identities. And it is also note worthy to know that specifically, the Hausa inquire whether a person's behavior accounting for age, gender, socioeconomic status, family position, place, and sociocultural factors of others engage in the behavior and audience. Is behavior worthy of a person displaying it? If so, they will further calibrate and determine to what extent it possesses and in what manner it falls short of it. So in caution of Aboli films in household communities of Northern Nigeria, an overview. Like in 1996, as I said, trace the advent of Indian films in Northern Nigeria to the 1950s. According to him, British censorship records reveal that uh, Indian films were first introduced in Northern Nigeria by Lebanese exhibition in the 1950s, who were eager to see whether the diet of American and English films could be supplemented by the, by the odd Arab or Indian one. These exhibitors speculated that Arabic films would be popular in the North because of the many religious links between Northern Nigeria and the Islamic world. As the language of religious practice and debate, Arabic carried immense authority. But despite these links, the films never become popular on Northern Nigerian screens, while Indian films came to dominate them. Adamo 2014 noted that the transformation of Hausa video film to Hindi film to Hindi film started from 1995 with Mr. USA Galadimas Soeya Aunazuchi, Pains of Love, produced under the auspices of the Nigerian Film Corporation, just. The video film was based on the Hindi film. And um, he also observed, however, that the film was not approved for release within the house of sociocultural setting due to its explicit nature. And before its before it cinema release, it was a premiere to, a sell, uh, to a select private audience in a video store in Kano in 1996. And the overwhelming audience response was that it was too Hindi and too adult to be accepted in the house of culture as a video film. More so since it was also the first house of video film which, uh, with body contacts between genders, this was probably what informed the decision not to release it commercially and restricting its viewing to cinema showings only. And this restriction was not to, uh, to last long as humor, uh, as Hausa film producers soon afterwards started adopting storylines of Hindi films to create local films in a competitive frenzy that evaded the strict scrutiny that greeted the beginning of the trend in the words of Adamu 2014. And he said, in the, in the stampede that followed, no, no one was focusing attention too much on serious storylines or drama with Nigerian appeal or even Africa. The focus, was, the focus was on creating video films for house speaking audience that cloned the Hindi films with the audience, which the audience was already addicted to. In many interviews with popular culture press, the producers claimed that they were trying to win away house audiences from their addiction to Hindi films by providing readily digestible alternatives that frame the same Hindi central storylines, but within a more African setting. Yet they were merely reinforcing their focus on Hindi seminar hello, by putting it as Africa. Yes. Hello. 
Tajara, please, you have two minutes round up because of time. We are very sorry. So, okay, I have just, let me just go to the methodology. Can I quickly go to the methodology? Methodology. Can you quickly talk about the methodology in one second? Then you go to findings. Okay, okay. This study, uh, 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 the methodology of the study, this study adopts intertextual methods to study the presentation of Hausa's sociocultural values in translated Bollywood films. And the population of the study includes translated Bollywood films into Hausa language. And the exact number of these cannot be ascertained at the moment due to the varied nature of the pool of producers and marketers. Of the various films, two will be purposively selected and analyzed to see the extent to which they represent the cherished Hausa sociocultural values. Data shall be coded and qualitatively discussed, uh, analyzed and discussed to draw meaningful inferences and conclusion. Data arising from the study shall be discussed in relation to existing literature to establish validity and reliability. And findings are expected to unravel the values that are represented in translated Bollywood films in relation to our social cultural value system. Thank you. As I said, this is an ongoing study. All right. All right, that is noted. Thank you very much for the right, presentation. Thank you very much for the presentation. Mr. Kalef Monday. Mr. Kalef Monday. Mr. Monday, are you there, please? Mr. Monday, are you there, please? Yes, good afternoon. Mm. Okay, I'll go ahead for the presentation. Okay, Can you hear me? Okay. All yes, right. go ahead. All right. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Caleb Monday Jonah. I'll be presenting this paper. It's a joint paper already with myself and uh, Ken Dujua Bukola. And the title of our paper is uh, Reconstructing Cultural Identity in Indigenous African Film. The Dietic Relations Between Constraint and Mobility in October 1. All right. Um, one of the most discussed concepts in African criticism is culture. Because culture is believed to be that holistic whole that determines and defines everything else, identity, modes of behavior, patterns of living, among others. Now, the idea of culture being an unaccompanied term with a stable conception has been increasingly uh, challenged. This shows that culture is not a given, but a construct, because it is riddled with contradiction, paradoxes, and inherent needs. Okay? Now, when cultural identity in Africa is engaged in this context, which or which identity does it reflect? Is this the tradition, traditional or the identity of the world or the land of the people? Yes, it's on table and fixed. Now, I argue culture is not on morals, law, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of the society. Now, the, this, this argument includes that culture is largely behavioral, and this shows that some things seem to be excluded, okay, and that is the material aspect of culture, such as food, clothing, and all those objects, which also defeat culture. So therefore, Greenblatt argues that this material culture is the pointer towards the unseen behavioral pattern, as argued by Taylor. Now, if this was to be the case, which one would be the true conception of nature? Is it the unseen behaviors which are manifested in physical items? Thank 
Hello. Hello. Aisha Umar, are you ready, please? Hello, Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Uh, what about Gideon? What about Gideon? Yes, Hello, I'm here. Gideon. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Gideon, please you go ahead and make your presentation. Okay. Yes, uh, Monday, we will come back to you, please. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, afternoon. I'm in a very... Hello? Yes, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I am Gideon Ademudanja from the Center for the study and promotion of cultural sustainability, University of Medjugorje. Um, and I'm presenting the topic entitled Preserving and Documenting Indigenous Sound in Northeastern Nigeria through Kani, Kani Wood Themes. Um, it is a universal language kind, and is arguably the most universal of all performing art, which is found in almost every society. So music is often a part of um, an intangible cultural heritage. And for the purpose of this presentation, acoustic instruments are those instruments or musical instruments that are unamplified. So a lot of uh, music performances in the northeastern part of Nigeria uh, use acoustic music, which um, are amplified. And majority of the people uh, have instruments, but because of the conflict, um, those instruments are being damaged. And a lot of people have been completely alienated from their cultural um, environment. And so, the production of these musical instruments are declining due to the insurgencies and challenges. Uh, people can no more go to the forest to, to get wood, clays, hide, and some of these um, materials for constructing these musical instruments. So, uh, because there's a lot of insurgency there, Boko Haram has, um, has, uh, has made it difficult for people to even travel freely from one town to other, from village to village. So most of the musicians, they are finding it difficult to practice their craft. And without this practice, um, um, their talent um, would likely win, uh, win, win down. Because if you don't put it into practice, that's the craft of making music, you end up forgetting about it. So. And some of them are finding other means of livelihood, which, are, which includes like farming, fishing, and other types, other things that they do. So as a result of, of all of that, there is a lack of transfer, transfer of skills and knowledge to sustain 
this intangible musical experience. And a lot of, a lot of such authentic there's no purpose of documenting these values through the digitization. And new technologies can help in this preservation and documentation of this sound of this music in the Northeast. And Carnywood, um, the entertainment of Carnywood has a big role to play in the safeguarding of these indigenous music performances, as they also stand to benefit from using these sounds in their movies and their music production. Um, actually, it's going to help bring back uh, some of these uh, endangered, uh, endangered uh, uh, some part of Nigeria has been ongoing as far back as 2009. 2009. And it, it, however, in the northeastern part of Nigeria, um, Borno, Adama, and Yobe are the most um, afflicted uh, states, uh, which are also known uh, as the Bay states. And over 1.9 million people uh, livelihoods uh, have been absorbed. So this attack is actually forcing a lot of people from villages and communities, as it is also destroying a wealth of musical tradition and cultural identity. So which this tradition, this identity of music of these people is very vital and it is part of their everyday survival and it is bedrock of a lot of um, civilization. So hence there is a tendency for such musical instruments to go extinct. So now, although there are many um, similarities in the musical instrument in the, in the northern part of Nigeria, however, in the northeast, there are some particular kind of music, uh, musical instruments which are specific to the northeastern part of Nigeria, which are idiophones. We call them idiophones because they are categorized in a way that they produce their own kind of sounds. This involves rattles and xylophones. Uh, the sounds are generated from the instrument themselves. So although we have about six categories of um, um, musical instrument classification, but for the purpose of this study, I'm going to take a look at the idiophones category, which is the hugest part of the cultural identity of the northeastern part of Nigeria. And this is minimally incorporated in Carnywood industry. Um, majority of the states in the north speak Hausa, and this is because Hausa is the dominating language being spoken in the northern part of Nigeria, especially the northeast. In fact, you can go to a place wherever you find people in the northeast that don't speak their own dialect, but they can speak Hausa and maybe with English. For example, I can't speak my dialect, but I can speak Hausa and English. And since a greater population of the northeastern states are highly um, patronizing these Carnywood movies and mu music, there is need for the inclusiveness of the cultural elements of the north northeastern parts of um, Nigeria in their story and all of that. So since they stand to represent the entire north, not only um, including northeastern parts of uh, the country, so there is need for them to widen their scope instead of just focusing on the Kano and other places i think there is need to also have a balance of the representation of the entire uh, northern states um, now in Kanyewood, in their music most of their music are being produced digitally however most of their sounds are acoustically produced. For example, the Kalambu or the top of the musical instruments are not amplified electronically, but when you record them in the studio, for example, they stand a better opportunity of being preserved because now they are digitized and they can be saved and they cannot easily deteriorate as you change their, as you transfer them from one device to the other, from one storage to the other. So as I said earlier, these videophones are the commonly used um, variety of instruments in the northeastern part of Nigeria. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
this melodic instrument, for example, like Zalakun, is among the classes of indigenous acoustic in instrument, which is overlooked. So this um, presentation, I realized that if the Carnewood music and movie industry can incorporate this um, um, idiophone, idiophonic music instrument, it's going to go a long way into depicting a lot of the sounds that are obtainable in the northeastern parts of Nigeria, which uh, in my own case is the Bibe state, which are Bono, Adama, and Yobe state. So now the endangered acoustic musical instruments are those instruments that are fragile and they don't last more than two, three years. Most of the instruments do not last a lifetime. So a year or two or three, sometimes um, you see them deteriorating. So their functionality will dwindle. So this basic material used for this um, um, include uh, special calabash trees, uh, animal, wild animals, and all of that. So, but because of the conflict that is ongoing, it's difficult for them to actually go and get those materials. So the ones on ground are actually deteriorating. So what do we do now? Many musical instruments that are deteriorating can actually be, be sampled or recorded, in this case, for the community to preserve uh, their culture. Uh, and as we know, in African society, especially in Nigeria, most of the um, the transfer uh, the, the the preservative medium is orally done instead of being done um, digitally. Uh, music is not like painting, when whereby if you have a canvas, you can just paint it and keep it, or if you have a fabric for textile, you can just do a tie and dye and preserve it. But for music, that is an embodied um, talent or skill. You need a recording to actually preserve it. Mr. Gideon, you have one minute to round up. Pardon? You have one minute to round up, please. Round up, please. Round up, please. The of this musical instrument needs to be conserved, preserved, and safeguarded digitally using new technology so that um, the people that are struggling with insecurity can actually uh, have it at, as, 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 as the government is trying to restore peace, we're trying to restore and preserve these musical sounds. This can also mean, uh, this can also take a, a shape of therapeutic uh, it can be therapeutic in a way for them that are that have hurtful memories of conflict and other things. So it is our duties as researchers, producers of music and uh, movies, to actually keep this tradition alive. Although it is a very difficult task because of the insecurity, however, it is feasible in a way. So Carnival has a big role to play in the preservation and collection of this acoustic sound, which are endangered. So because Carnewood are sometimes getting their ideas from Asian uh, uh, movies like Bollywood and Arabian uh, adaptation and all of that, but we have other states nearby in the Northern East some part of Nigeria, which can, they can find their ideas to incorporate them into their movies. So this is a brief of um, this presentation. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Agidio. Now we call Abdul Mumani Essay. Hello, Mr. Alumani. Hello, Mr. Alumani. Hello, Mr. Alumani. Hello, Mr. Alumani. Mr. Abdul Mumani Essay, are you ready? Hello. AUX mode. Now, what about uh, Daniel Olajide? Daniel Larry, Daniel Olajide, are you ready, please? Yes, I am. I'm ready. I am okay. ready. Can you hear me? Uh, Olajide, you may go ahead. Yes. 
Yes, I am ready. Can I go on? Yes, I am ready. Yes, go ahead. Can go I go ahead. on? Okay, yes, go thank ahead. you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. The title of the paper is Reconstructing Cultural Identity in African via Global Media Space. Introduction. Generally speaking, culture is a vital component of human society. It plays a prominent role in people's thoughts, worldviews, actions, reactions, and others. Indeed, it is a primary determinant of what goes into people's individual lives, families, communities, and society at large. No doubt. Can you hear me, please? Yes, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I identify and differentiate themselves via these things and rich cultures. Their traditions are common, are common grounds and differentiating elements, which implies that these cultures have become their media of identity. For instance, when an indigenous African speaks his or her indigenous language, greets, dresses, or sings, other Africans will have an idea of his or a specific origin among the clusters of ethnicities in the continent. More so, their social values and moral consciousness emanated from their culture, as they could harmoniously determine what is right and what is against society's common good. This accounts for their ability to create and maintain law and order during the pre-colonial era. Therefore, Africa has never been a lawless and disorganized society as some painted it to be. Now, the segment of the problem, no doubt the colonial masters did not establish radio stations in Africa to project the culture of the indigenous populace, but to serve the European community and the colonies, more so to inculcate European values and attitude as part of the culture, cultural domination. Mlama as quoted by Adandura 2018. So it is not likely that non-African film stakeholders will genuinely and appropriately project African culture in its original form. However, some African film stakeholders do not seem to realize the significance of appropriately casting their culture in the right frame. As a result, they unconsciously told the destructive part as they destructively amplified the negative side of their culture at the expense of the positives. On the other hand, mass media and online communication systems have unconsciously opened up the global space for the transmission and the broadcast of African cultural values and identities. But it remains to be seen if the custodians and the stakeholders of African films, that is Yoruba film writers, producers, directors, customer, customers, critics, editors, viewers, and others can appropriately disseminate African true African culture, true cultural identities and heritage to the world via this readily available global media. So the study focuses on Yoruba strata of Nollywood to find out our cultural communication potentials, also to investigate the extent to which it has performed our cultural and identity educational role and how it could improve on our effort in the, the construction of African cultural identities in general, uh, generally and Yoruba in particular. So I actually intend to review some uh, sub, uh, uh, titles which, is, which are the film industry as a medium to preserve African cultural values, drama as medium of storytelling, the potentials of Yoruba films and the reconstruction of Yoruba cultural values. Now, methodology. The study is qualitative. The researcher utilized the audiovisual content analysis method as it analyzed some cultural elements in a few Yoruba indigenous films. Among the movies analyzed are Shawuroide, The Brass Bell, Agogoiwo, which means the Totem Bell, Aruba Tiulu Anile, which means the art of the law is of the law, Magun, which means Thunderbolt, and Oleku, which means serious adventure. Unquestionably, many Yoruba films employed Yoruba oral varieties 
However, these selected six, six seem to have some unique depth in terms of quality in communicating the moral values of the Yoruba nation and our indigenous communication devices. These films were highlighted, analyzed, and uh, inferences were drawn from some of the audio and visual text. Uh, the project is still ongoing. So in order to save our time, I think I can stop here. All right, thank you very right, much. Thank you very much. Um, now we call on Umar Mekudi. Aisha Umar. S.A. Abdelmumuni. The three of you, if you are ready, let me know, please. Hello, Umar Mekudi. Aisha Umar. Hello. Aisha Umar, are you ready? S A A S. Uh, I can see this A S online. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, Umar Mekudi. Yes, sir. Are you ready for the second paper? No, I I will present it later. I'm just trying to, to wind up. You are presenting later. I'm presenting later. I'm presenting later. Yes, sir. Okay, that is noted. All right, sir. What about Aisha Umar? Hey, it's Bello. Hey, it's Bello. Can you hear us, please? Hello, hey, it's Bello. Right. Okay, you are. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm hearing you. Okay, go ahead, please, A.S. Bello. Hello, are, are you with me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, the anchor of the conference and uh, all members of this uh, very august uh, uh, academia. I intend to look at the, uh, the problems that the Hausa team are facing in this uh, uh, century, uh, most likely in terms of the, the theme, the content, and the structure. And uh, in so doing, I decided to select about uh, two to three films uh, to lay them into uh, practice and see the problems and uh, the solutions that House of Him are facing in these uh, uh, years. One, the major problem of House of Hims is they lack originality. Most of the House of Hims are not original. Uh, yesterday, one of the presenter uh, was trying to tell us the, the growing in House of Him. And I'm happy that uh, this conference is encouraging us to go to the grassroots, conduct research before we embark on any kind of theme that is indigenous theme. And uh, in so doing, I look at uh, Karai, I look at Dua Demandia, and uh, I look at uh, another film, Ibro Hotiho, between 2013, that were produced between 2013 to 2017 as my scope or as my limitation. And uh, sincerely speaking, uh, themes are more of adaptation. So in the sense that, like, if you look at Dua de Manja, it's a borrow from the Western culture of the country. That is Yoruba versus Igbo. If you look at uh, the film, um, Ibro Hotiho, it's a Hindu film. It's a borrow too from Hindu. If you look at film like, uh, um, just an example, I'm just giving an example with these two films. So the challenge here is that I always ask a question: Why, instead of questioning Hindu, America, um, China, and other Western culture, 
why can't you go into our own culture and copy from it and adopt our own shame? That is the problem of my, of my of the paper. That's the problem of the study. And I was saying that House people doesn't have culture. Um, that's a question I always ask the film producers and especially in the uh, in the house film industry. I was saying that uh, Africa doesn't have a culture. Nigeria we don't have a culture. Oh, um, Northern Nigeria we don't have a culture. So um, my paper now look at some of these films. At the end of the day, we find out the content, the content of the films and the uh, themes were totally out of Hausa culture. They are not portraying the typical culture of Hausa people. And by mere looking, even the way they are trying to adopt the Western culture, it did not fit into what doesn't belong to you. But if you are going to find what belongs to you, our expectation is you are going to deliver. Yes, because this is mine. I have the knowledge about it. I've conducted research to, and I think that we'll get a good result. So now, this uh, the film like Karai, Gwaska, Iburo Hojiho, Dua Demanja, and so on and so forth that this paper look into are automatically not house film. They are not house film. But we can just say they are film that were produced just by applying house language in order to disseminate a certain information into the ears and eyes of the uh, people. Now, what is the way out? One, majority of the producers just doesn't want to go back to school and doesn't want to go, go to seminars, doesn't want to attend conferences to learn on how they should capture into the modern method of film production. That's challenge number one. All of what they are after is to get money put in their pocket and solve their problem. They're not after portraying the culture of Hausa society. Number two, even the directors, they dance to the tones of the producers because this is what I'm going to be paid. And for that reason, any threat that come to me, I'm not after protecting the interests or the culture of my own society because I'm going to be paid a certain amount of money. So anything you are asked to do, the, we are expecting that the director should be able to even guide better because a director, more or less, he owns the film after it has been written. And, uh, 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 but at the end of the day, you find that he too just uh, trying to just give whatever he wants. Then, moreover, apart from issue of knowledge, uh, a seminar workshop, there's another challenge. That is to say, they always improvise. Even if you want to adapt, there's some adaptation that you can do if care is not taken, the original owner of that uh, film or that uh, culture will not, will not even know that you adapt from his own culture. Because you may preference at the end of the day. But they don't do that. The problem is they are in haste, they are in a hurry to produce, go to the market, sell, and get the money. So it's all about money, 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 money. And film is a school of itself. Film is a school. It's a college, film is a university because you are it's a mirror of the lamp of that very society. You are trying to portray the culture of that society in film. Of recent, yesterday, I was going through a WhatsApp and Professor Sayaka say sent one video clip whereby we saw the China students that are learning Hausa in China uh, practicing one of the Hausa movie, movie on stage, sing song on stage. You know, if the Chinese people will be covering your own culture, then I think you should be proud of yourself to practice your own culture. You shouldn't go and start copying America, China, Indian, that is Hindu, uh, or Western culture into your own. You are killing your own, uh, 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 your own uh, progress. 
So that's what the paper uh, is, 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 is all about. And then finally, we, we, we adapted uh, interview method and uh, uh, we consulted a lot of uh, people in the town, those who are watching the film between the age of uh, 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 11 to, 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 to 30. At the same time, we're able to consult a lot of books as methodology of conducting the, the research. And uh, finally, the, the ethnography theory was adopted, as we have seen in the work of uh, Abla Oba Adamu uh, 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 2004, uh, and so on and so forth. Abdul Karim too adopted the same, uh, the same ethnography in some of his work. And at the same time, a lot of uh, 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 film um, uh, academicians uh, in the universities uh, adopt uh, that method. So that, that technique was adopted and we're able to, 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 to analyze uh, uh, the, the, the paper. So I, I thank you very much. And um, let me apologize. I ought to have come on board uh, since in the morning because I'm having a series of meeting here and there in the college. That's why you are here for me. And I really appreciate the organizers of this program uh, because we're able to say that it is a another landmark towards the progress and achievement of film and, in, and academics. So and I'm pleading into those, uh, to our people who are producers and filmmakers that this is a field in the northern part of the country, that this workshop or conference is an opportunity for them to come and learn. Because since yesterday, I've been following and I've I learned a lot of uh, 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 things from the people that were presented. So, and uh, finally, we, we say that we go stay alive and say that of next year. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much, thank Dr. Dr. A.S. Bello, for the presentation. Thank you. Now, before we continue with the presentations, we let us just spend five minutes taking questions and answers before we now queue in other presenters that are already online. And before that, we can I can recognize Jamilu Abdul Salam online. Uh, and we wanted to take him for a goodwill message tomorrow, uh, yesterday, but unfortunately we could not. So Jamilu, minutes, one minute. Hello Jamilu. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, um, well, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And I, I feel this is a wonderful gathering. Um, uh, it's a very, very interesting concept that uh, the film industry requires. <clears throat> Not just that of Kanyewood, but uh, the whole industry, the whole movie industry uh, in Nigeria. Now, uh, my name is Jamila Abdesalam. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, Netflix Nigeria Limited. I feel with gatherings like this, coming on board together by different people that we consider quintessential intellectuals in the entertainment industry is going to do a lot because it's going to shape the way the practitioner think about what movie industry is all about. We feel there are so many variables whereby if we really consider and articulate them very well, the whole idea, the whole mindset of the practitioners will change. Um, uh, let me not take so much of our time, but uh, part of the goodwill message I'm going to send, which I feel uh, the organizers of this event should consider maybe going forward, are uh, two to three areas. One major area, is the area of knowledge. Without knowledge, you cannot do so much. And especially in the entertainment. Entertainment is supposed to be something that is impactful in the society, whereby people learn their information that has been passed across. So I feel the Kanye Wood is lacking that because majority of the script writers, the producers, are not producing their content based on knowledge driven. They are doing it probably for commercial value. 
and which even the commercial value is one aspect that is lacking. Now, knowledge is key. I think um, uh, with Bayer University, with organizers of this, there should be some form of uh, short courses, which there was a time I had the opportunity, I had meeting with the likes of Ashuru, I saw him here on board, and I was advising, why not Bayer University come up with short courses on script writing? short courses on lighting, short courses on directing, on acting, whereby a practitioner or a random, sorry, excuse me, please. Are you with me? Yes, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, um, um, sorry, a call was coming in. I Let me just forward all my calls just a second. Okay, whereby uh, um, um, people that are interested in joining this thing, guys that study mass communication and many other discipline, could come and apply and run these courses and have some certification. I feel that is going to add value and is going to be a revenue generation process, even for the department or 